and then in our render function we're going to just render the list of shelf items so we need to use the map function to go through um, this component this state shelf items and then create a list of li's for each item so we're just going to use map it takes a function and an id and i'm going to use the arrow function and simply i'm going to return the li so remember we need a key prop to make it unique so react knows how to they're different from each other and then we just need to create a button in front of each item this button will be used later on for when we click on it it adds it to our carts so right now there's no on click handler on it but we will add it to it later now we just need to print out the actual item so we're just gonna use the bracket item and then we close the li tag now this will contain a list of LIs for each item in our shelf item. And now we're just going to indicate this is a shelf. I'll put a H2 here. And then I wrap the shelf items in ULs. So it will be a proper list. And there you go. It's very simple. The shelf will just render a list of items in the shelf. And next we need to create a new file. Let's call this file will be displaying the shelf items. Let's call this cart.js. And inside of it, this is the part where we need to set up the Redux data. So I will call this the cart container components because it does the heavy lifting of the data and it takes shelf item, shelf component as part of its components. So just get the boilerplate from app.js and then change all the name into carts. And then we're going to take out some of the things that we don't need. Just make it simple. And now you have a very basic component it's called carts. And this component is going to be a bit, a little bit more complicated because it's a container component. Uh, if you want to know more about what container components are, you can read about it on the in Google. Um, they're very, they're very uh, nice thing to have. Um, I hope in this video, I this component, I can show you, you know, what you need to do in this container component in order to hook up all the data in Redux. So we need to import a couple of uh, things into our container components. First, we need to bind action creator from, uh, com from the Redux component NPM module. Now this bind comp action creators, and then we need another one called connect. All of this is uh, well documented in Redux. So if you want to know more about them, you can read them on the Redux website. Now, the next thing we need to do is to import you know, everything from cart actions that we defined earlier. In fact, let me change this name to just carts to make it easier to write instead of add to cart. Now we need to import our shelf component that we made earlier. And then inside the cart components, let me just give it a right spacing here. Inside the cart components, we need to do a constructor Remember, this is the class syntax of a React component. So you're going to need a prop here, and then you need to call super. This is pretty standard React stuff.
And now inside the render function, we are going to display some things. But first, before we do that, we need to define a couple of functions that are pretty standard to Redux. One is called map state to props, which will basically make the states of the application into a prop. Then you can pass it around like a, between components. So this will use the this one will limit the state that this component needs to just the cart states, like so. And then another component, I'm not, sorry, another function that we're gonna need is called math dispatch to props. Very similar concept. Now this one will make the dispatchers available to this components. Again, you can read about them in the Redux documentation. They are very well documented, and it takes a bit of time to understand what they do. But this is necessary for this component in order to set up the data flow. And finally, we need to change the export. Instead of default carts, we need to use the connect utility to connect everything together. So we're connecting map state to prop, we map dispatch to prop, and then with the card component itself. And this is pretty much all the data setup that we need for this component. It's a bit weird looking like this but this is a container component so it's going to do this stuff we need to do this stuff in order for our child components which is shelf component in this case to understand our data flow so now there's nothing here I, I want this app to display the items that we have on the shelf on top and then we, I want to display the items that we have in the cart on the bottom so we need to put the shelf component on top here and remember, we set up the data flow for this application. Now we can actually pass in all the action creators to the shell components. So if, if I pass in the add item prop to this and then do this dot prop dot actions dot add to carts, this will allow us to pass in the action creator function to the shelf components. This we can use later on on the onclick handler of the add button that we added earlier. So this makes the, the set data setup we have on the bottom makes this possible. And now underneath it, I'm going to show the shopping bag, which also known as the carts that we have. So it's going to be an order list, and then it will just render the item that we have in the Redux store. So whenever you add something to the shopping bag, it will update the state that Redux is tracking for what's in our bag. So for shopping bag variable, all we have to do is we just do this.props.cart, which is the the variable that we use to track what's in our carts. So let me rename this to cart items just to make it a bit more easier to understand. So this makes it possible, this this.prop.cart to hold all the items that we've added to our carts. So here we're just simply rendering a list of items in the li form and then for each item we need a key property and then it simply renders the actual item in the li tag. So this will render the content inside of our carts. And here we're just going Thanks for watching my video and thank you for your continued support for Pentaco. Visit the Pentaco website for more web dev articles, news, and tips and tricks. And be sure to subscribe to our social media channels to get updates regularly. I'll see you in the next video.